Hi guys, welcome to the Sketchwork TV show, How Did They Do That? I'm your host, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. Right, this week we're going to be taking a look at the amazing floor smashing effect that we used in the Hero Trial episode 3 last year. Uh, it's where we smash the concrete and it all cracks up. And uh, So let's take a look at that effect now and then we'll take you through the steps Superhuman to recreate strength. it. Superhuman strength. Yeah, and that. it's sort of something like this really. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Nolan, the academy starts in four weeks, so we will see you there. Proper job. Thank you. Okay, guys, this is our um, After Effects version of this floor smash tutorial. So, um, what we've got, I'm going to create a brand new comp and call it Cracks. Um, this is going to be where the, the actual cracks on the floor. Okay, and what I've done, I've dropped on a um, the, the actual footage layer there, and I've freeze framed it where I'm about to fall out of frame at the end, you know, right at the end of my flying across the the the, the concrete there. Um, what I've done, I've right clicked and I've turned it into a guide layer. That means it will not render. You can see it when you're planning things and you use it for reference, but it will not render on the final render, which is great for. Um, you know, making sure things are lining up properly without having to turn things on and off. So you can keep that one on, and uh, but it won't render in the final comp, which is great. Next thing I've done, I've turned, I've added some images of um, some cracks on the floor. Um, I picked these up from CG Textures, which is a great site. So I take a look at that, and uh, I've turned them all into a 3D layer, and I've lined them up on the concrete flying out towards where I'm going. So switch them on. They're already pre-keyed, which is great. Uh, I've just switched them on. I've duplicated a few and you can arrange them however you want to um, to, to make things look right. Um, the, we will be changing the blend mode later, but for now, um, this is what we're gonna have rendered because the other one's a guide layer and it won't render itself. So that's what we're gonna end up with, something like that. Okay, so the shock wave. Uh, this is a really easy effect to accomplish. So what you need to do, drop on your footage again, turn it into a guide layer, right click guide layer, so it won't render. Okay, um, and you've got yourself flying across there. First thing you need to do is add a gray solid. Now it is very, very important that this gray solid is pure uh, mid gray color. Um, so you need to make it 127, 127, 127, okay, which is a mid gray. Okay, that and nice gray fills the screen. Uh, next thing to do is add a white solid. Okay, so add the white solid, turn it into a 3D layer. You can turn the gray one off for a minute, turn it into a 3D layer, lower the opacity down to about 50% while you align it, and you want to align it to your floor. So, what I've done, I've uh, changed the orientation. So it all completely matches my my floor. And uh, next thing we need to do is uh, once you've done that, whack up the opacity again, so it's one hundred percent, and uh, drop on a ellipse um, effect. So drop on the ellipse effect, change the center to your impact point, which is what I've done there, which is where his hand is hitting, and. You want to, right at the beginning of your footage, keyframe the width and the height to be zero and change the thickness to about 95. That, that, what's work, that works well for me. You can change it to whatever you like, but it gives it some, a bit of good thickness there. And the inside color needs to be a pure white and the outside color, once again, needs to be our gray, 127, 127, 127. And uh, once you've done that, go all the way to the end of your footage keyframe the width and the height again to where it is exiting. So play around with these until you get to a point where they are just leaving the frame or where you want your shot wave to finish. Mine is around 1800. It's good to keep these um, the same because then you get a nice circular shock wave. Uh, otherwise, if you if you change those, it, you know, you get a bit of a wonky looking one. So if I change that to there, it goes off a bit of an oval, um, which is, you know, 
not not what we want so i change them to be the same 1800 by 1800 but it will you know depend on your footage so play around with those settings until you get exactly what you want the final thing to do is re-enable the gray solid so now we have the shock wave going across like that and going off the frame which is perfect uh, you'll notice at the top of the frame it sort of disappears around here that is because our white solid that we created came up to on, on mine is where that fence ended that's exactly where i wanted it if you want it to continue make sure your white solid um, goes completely all over the screen um, but for me i lined it up with the fence here so that the shot wave doesn't go any further than the fence which is the, the desired effect i wanted but it's up to you so like i say re-enable the gray solid and uh, that is your shock wave finished okay so for the shock wave shadow create a new comp make it comp size uh, go to your shock wave that we just created select the white solid and the uh, guide layer and control c copy those and paste them into your shadow Next thing to do is add a new solid, make it pure black, OK that, make comp size and OK. Place it underneath your white solid and switch it off. And next make the track mat alpha solid white and you can switch that back on again. And now you'll see that the shockwave is now just a pure black colour, which is perfect for our shadow. We can play with the opacity of that to lower it. Um, when we're positioning it on our main comp. So the next thing to do is do the impact itself. Now I've dropped on my footage again. So you can see it flying across, that's great. Um, also uh, you notice there's some nice stupidly left some things on the concrete in the background so I've created a clean uh, mask for that to get rid of that which is easily rectified but you know it shouldn't be done in the first place, so that's my mistake. Next thing you need to do is add on the cracks comp. Um, so we add that on, and what I've done, well, it's a different, it's a different one, but hey, you know, whatever one you want to use, um, you need to add a mask to that. So add yourself a mask. I've just done a, a very simple mask there, and I've added a bit of a feather to it, and I've animated it. So as I've flown across the the screen there, I've animated the mask to follow me. Um, until the very end, which is great. Uh, finally, I've changed the blend mode to classic difference, um, which worked for me. Uh, you might want to try some of the other options there, um, but that one's the best one for, for the, the one I had. And last thing I did, I added a curves adjustment to it to give it a little bit more contrast. And there's the cracks following me across. Fantastic, which is good. Uh, next thing I need I did was added my uh, displacement map, which was my white um, shock wave going across. I then added an adjustment layer with a displacement map filter on it uh, effect, and I set the displacement map to use the shock wave. Let's call that. Just stop confusing things. Uh, the shock to use the shock wave layer. I changed the mode to be luminance and I upped the vertical displacement to about 44, 45. And uh, if you then switch off the shockwave itself, you end up with the displacement following where your white shockwave went and your cracks going across the screen, which is perfect. Next thing I did, I added um, the shadow to it. I put on a fast blur. I lowered the opacity to about 20, 21, which uh, gave a nice soft shadow. And I added a glow to it. It just softens the, the shadow a little bit more, like so. Um, I, live, I left the default options for the glow there, but I upped the blurriness to about 44, 45 and repeated the, egg, um, the edge pixels there. So, you know, that just softens it all out and makes it a nice shadow, which then again follows the displacement across the screen, which is perfect. And... Uh, that's great. Next thing I did, I, I added a little bit of uh, fractal noise to it. So if I switch that on a second, you'll see the fractal noise there. Um, I changed it to be a stringy um, fractal type to spline. 
I upped the contrast to 313 and lowered the brightness to about 45. I changed the overflow to wrap back and I gave the evolution a little bit of a, um, an animation there. So I keyframed the evolution to move, um, which gives the whole thing some movement there. I also, under the transform, I scaled it down a bit to about 30 so that uh, there's a lot more detail going on there. Next thing I did, I dropped a luma key on there to key out the darker, um, up the threshold and the edge feather to four. And the last thing I did was added a CC vector blur, which is uh, a great effect. So you see before and after, it just really you know, amplifies those white areas, which is brilliant. Um, and for the uh, CC vector blur, I added uh, the amount to about 20, 23, which is, which is what works for me. Again, play around with them settings to see what works better for you. Um, I then dropped on the shadow map again and used the, um, I alphaed the shadow with the uh, fractal noise. So it then follows the, you know, the shockwave across the screen. So once you've done that, you can switch that one off. And that's hidden then. Then we've got the black uh, solid, which is some particles. And they're very subtle on the floor here. They just fly out from where um, where he's hitting the floor. Um, for that, I use CC Particle World. And um, I lined it to the floor to match my floor scene again. And set the birth rate to about 5 and I keyframed it so that, bring up the keyframes for that, so it bangs out about five and then reduces down to zero. So obviously it stops going, but the particles that are already generated are still flying across the screen. Um, I changed the position to match um, my floor, which is great. Physics, I set to be jet sideways, which worked for me, and a velocity about three. Then the particle type, I set the particle type to cube, the birth rate size, uh, the birth size to 0.38 and the death size to 0.13, which worked for me. Um, the color, I kind of tried to match the floor because I want it to be sort of more of a shock wave than an actual bright particle. But, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, you can add that and change to whatever you want there. Uh, finally, I set the, um, the blend mode to be soft light for the actual layer itself. So that's soft light. And then, did I lower the opacity? No, I'd, I kept the opacity as it is. Now, um, if you go to the options for the CC particle world, go to the rendering tab, and I changed it to be ice. That means that the particles slide across the floor, which worked great. And I also forced motion blur on that to give it some motion blur, which is fab. The last thing I did on top of all of that, I added a mask of the original layer. I masked Dean out of this layer here, otherwise um, the shockwave would go over the top of him, the shockwave would also go over the top of his hands and everything, and same with the original cracks. So if I turn that off, you can see the cracks are going sort of starting on his hand, which is no good. So mask out your subject as well. You might need a little bit of animation on the mask, um, so, so it goes, which is great. So it kind of follows him. So you might want to, when you're shooting that, make as little movement there as you can because to save yourself some time. Then the final thing I did, I added a few layers which are all identical, but they've got different um, uh, different positions and it's the lightning. So it's the lightning effect um, as he hits the floor. So all they're doing is buzzing around his limbs, his arm um, and things like that. And they all have the same settings apart from the origin and direction, which just follow um, whatever, you know, the limbs that you want to follow. I also put a little animation on the conductivity state to give the lightning some movement as well. The last thing, I just added an adjustment layer to just give the floor area a little bit of contrast. Um, just to sort of lower, lower that because the, the top was quite bright and I just wanted to lower the floor area a bit. So... I mask that out and put it on there. So there you have it. That's the finished article. Then the last thing to do is create another 
another pre comp, so a new composition. Uh, just call this one final scene. Okay. And if uh, we've got the impact, so drop on your impact like that. So there's our, our impact going across. Let's just lower that a minute. There we go. And uh, here, what you want to do is get to a position where you've got a lot of this bending and just increase the size ever so slightly. And then just re you know, move things around ever so slightly there. Just so you don't see the this you know the screen bending at the bottom there. And uh there we go. So that sort of works for me there. And uh, you can add an impact on there. So you can do an impact on the position. So you can uh alt click and put in an expression, wiggle. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. And you've got yourself uh, a little bit of camera shake there as well. Again, you know, if, if the camera shake moves the actual composition outside, sort of here, which is no good, you can just increase the size or just move it to adjust it accordingly and make it full. And there we go. Woo! So there you go. One smashed floor beyond recognition, but without anyone phoning the police to take you away. And don't forget, if you've got a question you want to ask us, um, a tutorial request, or even an episode you want us to put together, let us know in the comment section down there, or of course on our Facebook, Google+, or Twitter. Right, well that's it for this week's How Did They Do That Show on Sketchwork TV. Tune in next week to see how we created the Terminator vision effect, you know, the HUD from episode 5, Terminated. And finally, the Sketchwork TV question of the week. What is your all-time favourite visual effect that you've seen in a movie? Maybe we will recreate it. Who knows? Until next time, I'm Justin Heesman, your host on Sketchwork TV. How did they do that? See you again. Sketchwork TV.